welcome to the Ropen Report, where we bring you the latest news involved in the field of cryptozoology. I'm your host, Michael Pinkston. Let's take a look at some of the headline stories for the week. Gary Burrow Mayor declares Bigfoot as an official cryptid. A borough in Westmoreland County is now honoring Bigfoot in a way that most would not believe until they see it, so to speak. Derry Borough Mayor Grant nicely issued a proclamation this week to declare Bigfoot as the official cryptid of the borough. By proclaiming Bigfoot as our official cryptid and establishing Derry as a sanctuary, we are embracing our local folklore and the rich history that makes our community unique, said Council Vice President Nathan Bundy. This proclamation honors the generations of stories and sightings that have made Derry and the Chestnut Ridge a destination for those intrigued by the unknown. According to the borough, the decision to make the proclamation was to highlight the rich history of reported supernatural activity in the Chestnut Ridge area, which dates all the way back to the Iroquois stories of stone giants and all the way through reported sightings of Bigfoot in the 1970s. As a part of the proclamation, the borough now calls itself a sanctuary for Bigfoot, and any willful harm or capture of the species will be punishable by law. The mayor's proclamation also now designates Derry Borough as the gateway to the mysterious Chestnut Ridge. They are also encouraging residents and visitors to explore the mysteries of the Chestnut Ridge as it is considered a hub for those fascinated by the unexplained. I have to admit, folks, this story reminds me of the legislation which was passed to protect the resident of Lake Champlain, also known as Champ. Not sure why they used the word supernatural in the article. Hypothetically speaking, wouldn't Bigfoot classify as an unknown species or creature? Speaking of lake monsters, another mysterious object detected on sonar in Loch Ness. Prior to this event, the most recent such reading came in 2021 from tourist Benjamin Scanlon while aboard the cruise ship Nessie Hunter of Loch Ness Cruises. Scanlon reportedly noticed something on the sonar and took a picture of it while touring Scotland's Loch Ness with his family in August 26. Mike Bell, the boat skipper, estimated the object to be between 3 and 4 meters in length and at a depth of 20 meters. The depth of the lock at the siding area was 40 meters deep. This was Bell's second such sonar capture since first acting as skipper in 2019. In June of that year, Bell was piloting a group of tourists around Loch Ness when one of them drew his attention to an object on the sonar, which he estimated to be between 3 and 7 meters in length and approximately 35 meters below the surface. Two other sonar images were captured by Cruise Loch Ness director Ronald McKenzie in late 2020. McKenzie's sonar images were recorded within a mile of each other in the loch off of Invermorriston and at a depth of several hundred feet. By comparison, Sloggy speculated that the mysterious object most recently seen on sonar was a lot bigger than those captured by McKenzie in 2020. Flathead Lake Monster statue arrives in Polson, Missoula, Montana. In about three weeks, there will be a sculpture going up in Polson that's supposed to resemble a notorious Flathead Lake Monster people claim to have spotted through the years. Pat Binger lived in Polson and her children went to school there. She commissioned the sculpture and will be financing it. Her reasoning for doing so is quite simple. I guess I just wanted to do something nice for Polson. I have thought of other things before, but it didn't seem to work out. Then I just started thinking, we're kind of known for our Flathead Lake Monster, wouldn't that be fun, said Binger. This has been a two-year project that sculptor and artist John Leon has worked on. The sculpture will be placed at Sacagawea Park by the water in Polson. It's supposed to be a friendly depiction of our sea monster, according to Leon. It's a three-piece sculpture. The head is supposed to look like it's in the water, so the head is coming out at one end and there's a hump on the body in the middle with a couple of fins sticking out on each side. Then there's a tail sticking out of the separate piece at the back, said Leon. Binger has never seen this monster, but said that her credible friends have. The unveiling date was July 12th of this year. 
Jacob researched Flathead Lake in 2019. I don't think he found much evidence to support it, but then again, it is a large lake, 197 miles long and 165 feet deep. So there's a very strong possibility a marine reptile may be inhabiting the lake. More on the lake monster front. I think we saved the best for last. Now evidence has surfaced from Lake Champlain. Hydrophone captures echolocation sounds from Lake Champlain monster. An intriguing hydrophone recording from Lake Champlain features a series of sounds that some believe to be the site's famed monster exhibiting a form of biological sonar known as echolocation. The remarkable piece of possible evidence for the elusive cryptid was reportedly captured last month by longtime CHAMP researcher Katie Elizabeth. While out on Lake Champlain with her equipment-laden research vessel Kelpie 2, she deployed a hydrophone that caught curious clicks unfolding rapidly and a puzzling buzzing noise between them. The series of sounds bear an uncanny resemblance, although wholly unique in comparison, to echolocation exhibited by dolphins and whales. Check out the mystifying recording and find out more on this story at the Coast to Coast AM website. Elizabeth will be featured on the next episode of Rope and Research, so stay tuned for that. Folks, thank you so much for watching the Rope and Network on CC Media, YouTube, and Rumble. If you enjoyed this episode and would like to listen to the full non-condensed audio alternative, head over to our Spotify for Podcasters account, which you can find in the link directly below. In the meantime, speak the truth, and we will see you next time on the RRN.